First of all, hello to everyone. How was it going before weekends? Fine. Okay, um, so to begin with, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Alexander Shvechikov, and um, I have four months of real work experience, um, two of which using React. So I'm not gonna talk about React, it would be more like for those who want to start a career as a front-end developer. Um, it seems to me that I can give you some advice from the high of my experience. Um, and I want to prevent you from doing some mistakes, like as I did. So firstly, uh, I will tell you my story, uh, my path, maybe the, the most interesting things. Um, in the second part, um, I'd like to talk a little about current state of front-end tools, um, and I will not repeat any of those articles you might read before. I hope so. Um, and th in the last part, um, I'd like to talk a little um, about interviews uh, from the candidate's point of view, as I liked to see that. So let's start from myself. Um, I studied in university as applied mathematician, and I felt love to front-end engineering on last year, on my fourth year studying in university. I created my first single-page application without any minds of what is that. Um, and it, it works great, actually, but it was written really bad. and. It's just okay. Um, then I try to connect my um, love to front end with uh, mathematics. So I wrote um, a page that uses previously um, trained neural network um, to recognize handwritten digits. Um, right now it uh, doesn't work like this. And you know, I like the way how we can just pick Sublime Text and any browser to create such an amazing things. I mean, we couldn't do that just using Visual Studio and C++ and knowledge that was given to us in university. Um, nevertheless, I've got my degree in Applied Maths and after two weeks studying um, on the same specialization to get master degree, I realized that math is boring. Um, Front-end is more likely more, more just attractive to me. So I spent September to improve my skills in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, um, and then just start to find a job. And almost each of them was end like this. Um, I sent my CV uh, for almost each vacancy that has HTML and CSS in uh, description. Uh, I spent whole October creating um, some like HTML templates um, from uh, Photoshop uh, layouts. Otherwise, okay. And it was really boring since I understood that I want to spend more time programming rather than writing CSS and styling things. So I spent um, one month, more one, uh, to learn PHP and quickly understood that uh, PHP isn't ch a choice. So uh, as Douglas Crockford said, JavaScript unexpectedly has become the most important programming language in the world. Nobody expected that, nobody wanted that, it just happened. So it seems to me that all the hype around the JavaScript made me a JavaScript developer. So I completed some online courses um, like introduction to React, uh, I created my to-do apps, and started to search for a job. Um, and on the first interview, uh, there was a task um, to create some simple application, but, you know, I quickly understood that I don't know how to create my apps from scratch. Uh, I know how to do to-do app, but how to create uh, an application that has a little in common with um, my knowledge. So I failed my interview, my first interview to React developer position, but what I saw is an idea, idea for my own application. I changed their task 
um, I start to use a third-party API and start to code almost every day. And this is the React, uh, the result of this. But then I, I needed some money, um, so uh, I spent some time uh, to find a job and uh, my experience um, in working with, um, in creating um, HTML templates uh, helped me with that a lot. However, those work wasn't really good since I spent time uh, just writing landings, uh, working with CMS I didn't hear about before. Um, so when I saw an opportunity to work in a great company with a great people, uh, I sent my CV with previously completed application, uh, React Movies, and I was invited to an interview. And those amazing people uh, let me understood that I don't even know JS well, not to mention React and Redux. I developed my app without an understanding of what, it, what is that, <laughs> what's going on at all. And um, I understood that I should something do with that, and I started to investigate um, how I can create my apps using Redux. And I surround myself with news articles I read almost every day. Um, each article that appears related to React or Redux, even though it seemed to me like I already know that. Um, and as a result, uh, I found my current job when we create um, really just great applications using React. So just summing up uh, some advice from my path. Um, do test task. I, it will help you to become really better as a front-end developer. It seemed really obvious, but um, someone said me that you, um, the test tasks that were given to you um, are just um, companies trying to exploitate you. Just lots of guy. Um, and of course, don't be afraid of failing interview. Uh, each interview makes you much more better, so it's okay. And always try to find out what you are doing. You can develop apps without an understanding of what you are doing, but if you want to become better, just try to understand what you write and how it works. And yes, there was an Easter egg who noticed that. Yeah, great. So, how hard is to be a newcomer in a modern front-end world? I know that this topic was too long around. A lot of devs wrote really great articles about that. But I cannot just skip it, as I was a beginner and it was really hard for me not to drown in the ocean of all of this informational noise. Um, and the problem is that at, at the first sight, I thought that isn't it wonderful that we have such really huge shares? You can try any of these tools and find just the best one for you. But there is a problem. Almost each of these tools always go along with something really complicated or unnecessary. For instance, you want to learn Angular, um, Learn TypeScript first. Sure, you can use it without TypeScript, but it's like starting already wrong. Um, you want to learn a number. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just complicated. Uh, it's just self like self protection from beginners like me. And others seem to do job well, but they're not so shiny, and there is no so many tutorials like for others. There should be a reason for that. And that is where React gets it, its first point. Um, you write a JavaScript. All you need to start is official documentation and really no more. Uh, you, you know how to start. And you probably know JS6 as you know HTML. Um, however, um, you will always meet these strange words like Redux, Mobix, and with that uh, you will have to understand uh, Flux architecture and all things behind functional programming on to-do lists. Um, it's what it was really hard, uh, but don't be afraid. Just skip it. Um, as for me, it's like glasses. So when you will need them, you will learn. And 
you will understand how they works and why you should use them. And there is another point. There's really good choice. Um, so you probably can uh, pick uh, Vue.js. You learned how to build some simple applications. And you start to search for a job and see like this. And this is about all Ukraine. Mm, maybe Ember, nope. And actually, the situation doesn't change with time. I mean, I saw um, something similar back in November when I was searching for a job. And so in reality, there is choice only between two, Angular and React. And since this is React Kyiv Meetup, I should praise it. Um, but firstly, I would like to say a few words about Angular. Angular has oops, um, becomes incomprehensible even with first meeting. Um, you start, you want to learn Angular, you found really great course, but then when you complete it, uh, you will probably consider it as outdated since the latest version is four, but don't be afraid, it's just uh, a new versioning and call it just Angular. But the problem is then you will realize that companies are looking for junior developers that know Angular first and they could be understood. They want juniors to maintain old projects and Angular has just become at least um, has some usability. So it seems to me that you will feel really bad to start your career from already obsolete tool. And that is where another point goes to React. You wrote, you write JavaScript. Um, you develop your application on React and at the same time you develop your skills at all. I mean, that the best approaches that React community offers, uh, the best practices are applicable to development, development in general. You can switch to any other library then in future and found your um, skills applicable. And of course there's huge community and ecosystem. You can find any component you might need in your project. And Create React App has become just really useful. You can start develop instead of preparing your environment. And I cannot not to mention that Angular even doesn't have its own meetups in Ukraine. Who heard about Angular Kyiv? Um, so let's sum it up. Um, learn just first. It seems really obvious. But there won't be a point when you will 100% uh, sure that you can start to learn React. So then just start to learn React. Um, it seems to me that this is a concise process. You learn React and you learn JavaScript. And to do that, uh, I suggest you to find any open API. There will be links at the end of this presentation that you will find maybe useful. Um, start a project, uh, almost do, just do. And of course, surround yourself with new and articles. There are great digests on Dou UI and Haber Haber. It is really uh, great to start your week from reading um, um, useful articles. And you probably, some of you or all of you have a job and um, once you will probably need uh, to find someone young and full of inspiration. So let's talk a little about um, job interviews from my point of view as a candidate. And actually it was my interview. Um, sorry. I had at least 10 interviews uh, before I found my current job and each of them was completely different and it's great. But some of them, from some of them, uh, I was living with the feeling that I was judged by their knowledge, not by mine. Um, I know how hard it could be as yes, you have so little time to understand the real value of a candidate and at the same time, some of them might be really great and you 
just it's hard to choose between them. Um, but just a few things that I'd like to see um, as a candidate. So first of all, um, just please let me code. It is much better for me to show me how I can do things in practice. Just prepare some API or just data and ask me to work with it. And um, it is much easier for me to uh, work with something that I can just touch and can see what I work with. Um, and I probably can send my CV for at least 10 or even more companies. And if each of them will give me a test task, sure, I, I would like to do all of them, but uh, I will not have enough time for that. So I will probably choose the more attractive companies. So if your, um, if your vacancy is not really great for me or your company isn't popular, just think about your test task. And I'm not used to think as experienced developer. If something seems really obvious to you, it doesn't mean that it should be obvious to me. So please make your questions more clear. And although I don't know real situation on labor market, it seems to me that with all of these great articles, with this great documentation, um, there should be probably a lot of great juniors. So don't be afraid of asking too many questions. It will help you to understand the real value of a candidate. And other, on the other hand, um, candidate will understand his own gaps that should be filled before going to the next interview if this fails. And of course, actually JavaScript isn't so great. I mean, I don't want my children to write on JavaScript. It's really great, it gives us um, real freedom of how we can do things, but for the junior, it's like a hell. You're trying to build something, you find an article um, that describes the best practice of how to do that, but sometime after another article appears like oh, we all did that wrong, and it could be from the same author. I mean, for other languages, you can just find any course and then just update your knowledge to the latest version of a language. For JavaScript, you probably want, I don't know, maybe someone tried to um, learn Webpack 1 and it was like documentation. And then you see that new version of Webpack comes in and you think like, oh, okay, I will probably learn latest version, Webpack 2. But then you see that, and I mean, who heard about Rollup before? And I, I just, uh, and new tools are coming, and it's really difficult to not to drown in all of this ocean. I mean, is there any other software engineering fields where tools are so unstable and different, and everything changed with, with time? So please, don't overestimate. It's really hard for us not to just lose our minds in all of this JavaScript world. Whew. And so let us sum it up. Um, I suggest to know to newcomers to pick only one tool. And I guess you probably know what tool you should pick. And of course, read front-end related articles each day. I mean, surround yourself, just drown yourself in the front-end world. It's really helpful. Uh, you will probably uh, read the same things every time, but it's okay. Repeating is just uh, will be really useful for your mind. And of course, don't be afraid of job interviews. If like um, the more stronger you feel uh, pain in your fifth point, uh, the better interview was. It's really okay. Um, it's each interview makes you really better. So there will be a links. Um, it was like the website that helped me a lot um, when I start my way. And that's actually all. Thank you. Go to React Kiev, communicate, put likes. Okay. Thank you.
Uh -huh. um, first of all, the force is um, the test task that will be like really helpful to understand what you what you need to do in your application, your own like toy project. And on React cons, uh, there are a lot of useful suggestions of what you should do. Are there any questions? So, uh, did you find a job? Yeah, currently I'm working on a company when we, uh, where we're using React. Nice. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh. <laughs> the most difficult issue uh, when you try to uh, start your work, find your first job. Oh, it is a question. Yes. Um, the most difficult maybe is to find out what is really um, necessary for you to learn in this moment. I mean, I tried to learn observables when I even didn't know uh, what's Redux and uh, not to mention Mobix. So it seems to me that it is really hard to um, filter your news, your articles, just pick only those that is really useful for you. Next question. Uh, on your previous, I guess, slides, you give uh, two advices. First is read article every day, uh, day by day. But uh, the next advice is filter the information stream. Uh, how could you s explain? Because it's like conflicting and confusing, maybe. No. Why? <laughs> uh, it's just how an answer. you can read? Uh, so many articles and at the same time filter the stream of them? I mean, you can start read one article at one day and end this uh, in the second. I mean, there are a lot of to read and to see, you know. Uh, when I uh, write, wrote these uh, articles, I mean, I, mean I mean that there was a um, Facebook uh, conference and you probably might need to watch the videos. I mean, there is a lot of um, things to learn every day, but um, a filter, by filter, I mean that you couldn't just, I don't know, it's just filter. It seems really easy to me, uh, like um, something is necessary for you at the moment, something is not. And the information stream always like, go forward. So, so where is the problem? How many articles did you read each day? I don't know, a lot of them. Uh, I mean, it, was, it wasn't uh, just um, today new article appears and I read it. No. Uh, there was an article uh, from the very, very beginning of React and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, okay. <sighs> Uh, what are your skills about uh, what about uh, CSS and uh, HTML? Uh, your skills and uh, uh, what kind of questions on the interview you you get you got about uh, HTML and CSS? Mm. I had at least eight interviews as uh, like HTML creator. I don't know, Verstalchik. Um and each of them was like, okay, your test task is great, so we will recall you. And there actually wasn't really any questions. I mean, each of them, I each company that gave me a test task to create HTML layout from uh, Photoshop template, um, they just, um, they didn't ask me at all, you know. They looked at my code that I wrote, like HTML CSS, it's still a code, and there wasn't any questions, actually. Oh, are there any more questions? Oh, a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you mentioned you should filter and you should uh, try to find out what is important, right? 
Uh, how do you do that as a person who doesn't know what they're doing? Okay, if you start to develop your own project, like your own application using some third-party API, uh, you probably will find out that something you missed, something you should understand uh, better. And it seems to me that if you would like to add Redux to your project, you will probably have to read each article that related to Redux. And uh, by filter, I mean that you won't need to read about observables or mobics that you want to use in your project. This. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I was just wondering, like, as, as a person, like a, a junior developer, because junior developers will not know really what if observables are going to be a thing or not. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be difficult for them. I mean, I, like I I struggle with this all the time because uh, like I, one tool that I use is to follow certain people, like to follow certain people on Twitter, and that helps somewhat. That because uh, they they can kind of uh, offer you a new perspective. I don't know if you have any other tools that you use. No. <laughs> no, no, okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's maybe transfer to the next uh, talk, yeah? Uh, any questions that are left, we, you can ask on the after party or networking with pizza and... Okay, yeah.